Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today we're talking gifts. It's that time of the year where people might be starting to think about buying gifts for their loved ones, whether it's your mum, dad, son, daughter, auntie Jean, whoever it is that's into fish keeping and you're not. It might be a bit difficult to negotiate out there what's a good buy and what's a bad buy. So today I'm going to talk about the top five things I think you can buy for your loved ones as gifts. So fish keeping is no different to any other hobby. If someone's really into something, then they become the most pernickety, picky person in the world. And you don't want to get something that's just going to end up getting shoved in a drawer. So I'm going to run down what I think are the top five things that you could get for someone. And then a bunch of actual examples. If you were just unlucky enough to draw someone in a secret Santa and the only thing you know about them is that they like fish tanks, here's some things you can get. Number five, a test kit. Boring as hell, but I think it's useful for a reason. All too often, um, people who are experienced fish keepers, there's a good proportion of them who fit into the camp of the I don't need to test my water, I know what's going on. They don't. So this is your chance to guilt them into testing their water more. Fish keepers keep water and good water keeps fish alive. So if you're buying something for your grandpa, then you can get this, get them a test kit and ask them to show you how it works. And then they are testing their water. Then they get a chance of catching something that they otherwise wouldn't and they just write it off as one of those things. Test kits are fantastic. I think they're really useful in the hobby and everyone should use them regardless of the level of experience. So whether they're just starting out or whether they've been doing it for years, a test kit will be useful. They might already have one, but I guarantee it'll be going out of date soon. They will be able to make use of a new one. Two main types that I, I like, if you think they're going to be the kind of mad scientist type and they like to get out their little vials and fill them with water and do the testing, you want something like this. This is the API Master Test Kit. There's lots of other ones out there. They're all fine. It doesn't really matter what kind you're going for. What you're telling them to look for is trends. So making sure their water stays stable over an amount of time. So even if it's slightly off or it measures differently to another test kit, if you see it change, you know something's going on. That's why I recommend this. If they're the mad scientist type, something like this. If they're more into their gadgets and tech and things like that, then maybe one of the ones that uses an app. Something like the JBL ProScan, where you dip in a little strip, you scan it with your phone and it spits out some numbers to tell you what's going on. There's loads of things available. As always, there will be links in the description. Number four, lights. Let there be light. Good lights can make or break an aquarium and old lights can both be inefficient and not very good looking. So a good set of LED lights can really shine a light. No. So a good set of lights or a light upgrade can really put a fish tank and you can see enough of them. So a good set of lights or a lighting upgrade can really help someone see their tank in a whole new light. Um, but lights do make a difference and you might be helping them save money. If they haven't upgraded their lights for a long time, the LED lights these days, they've come on leaps and bounds in the last few years. So not only will it be an upgrade, they'll also cost them less money because they're cheaper to run, they're more energy efficient and they're better at lighting the tank. So, there are a few options here. You can get quite spendy with lights, but the budget options these days, so your things like your Hooger or your Nycruz, um, they, they are really good options these days and they don't cost all that much considering. I really like, the kind of mid-range thing is the Fluval series, so the Fluval Aquasky or the Fluval Plant, if they have a planted tank. Um, they're good options. Again, as with all these things, there will be options down below or links down below to help you buy these things. It's a really good present. I can't think of a situation where someone would get a new light and go, meh, don't need that. If you know they're really into their fish tanks and they put a lot of pride in this and you want a high-end light, mm, it's probably not going to be the thing to go for here because while I don't really have a ton of experience in the high-end lights, if that's something that the person you're buying for is interested in, they will already have done all this research. They may already have brands that they are considering or that they know they want. So it's not really the kind of thing to get somebody as a gift like that. So if you want to buy them that, you need to have a chat with them. If you just want to get one of the lower ends, whether it's the budget or the mid-range stuff, all you really need to know is the size of their tank and then you'll be able to size it appropriately for the light that you're going to buy. Number three, food, fish food. What these guys eat. Um, most fish keepers fall into loosely one of three categories. They either research the hell out of everything and they only buy specific things. They've done all their research and their homework to make sure they're getting the best nutritional value versus cost and things like that. There's the other lot that just buy the big name brands because that's all they trust and they don't really think about it that much and they, they stick to that. 
and then you've got the guys who just buy whatever's on sale. So, for all of those categories, food is a really good option and to go for something a little bit different, a little bit more niche, there's lots of small suppliers, independent places out there that make their own fish food and sell that. So a gift of some fish food might be the thing to get them to try something new, which can only be a benefit. It might not work out for them in the end, but it's a good thing to mix things up and get a good variety in there. There's lots of really good retailers out there selling really good foods. So getting some fish food, get some really good stuff, it helps the fish keeper change things up a little bit, try some things new, benefit of the fish. Number two, which I might have slightly overinflated the importance of, but maybe you want to buy them some Aquarium Adventures merch, like their own fish towel, um, some fantastic t-shirts, jumpers, polos, some of my fish food, all these things. Um, no, maybe they've got a favourite YouTuber or something and you, they would like a little gift, a little bit of merch. Something they wouldn't normally buy themselves but they might wear sneakily in their fish room when they're all alone. <laughs> but as a variation on a the theme of buying them a donation to charity, you can purchase right now the Aquarium Adventures 2024 calendar. Um, this is a calendar where we're fundraising for charity you buy this calendar, you'll be contributing to two really good causes, the Freshwater Life Project and the Amazon Research Centre for Ornamental Fishies. And they get a little calendar. So, the number one thing I think you can buy your fish lover in your life sounds like a cop-out, but it's gift cards. Gift cards are not a cop-out. Gift cards are a great gift for a fish keeper because they are that picky that that gives them the option to go and be more specific and buy the thing that they want. It's a terrible idea to buy someone a fish unless they specifically ask you for an exact fish. You're usually buying them a problem. You're getting them something that they have to find a house for. It might not be as suitable for the tank that they've got or the fish that they've got in that tank. So don't buy someone a fish unless they specifically ask you to. But gift cards, whether it's for a shop specifically. Um, so you could buy an Aquarium Adventures gift card, they can go and buy the food that they want from my website. You could buy a Maidenhead Aquatics gift card, you could buy any of the small retailers and there are some really good ones whether you're local to Premier Aquatics or you want to get some fancy plecos from In The Bag Tropical Fish Keeping or any of the other retailers, that's all fine. But it could just be making your own gift card. Some of the best presents I've had over the years have been my kids have literally drawn me a picture of a fish saying one voucher for one free fish and then I get to take them to the fish shop with me, we get to have a look around, spend the day together and I buy the fish I want for my birthday. Perfect. So whether you're making a gift card or you're buying one from one of the online places, you might be supporting a really small business. So while I will include links to lots of things down below that you can buy off Amazon or something like that, gift cards for local retailers, small businesses, can make a big difference to both the person you're buying for and the person you're buying from because that can make a big difference to their business. Really is a win-win and definitely not a cop-out. That's my number one recommendation. If you're reading this two days before someone's birthday and you don't have time to source something locally and you just want to buy a thing, there are lots of things which make really useful presents as spares or extras or little upgrades or little things that you can get. So these are a bunch of things where I will put the links down in the description for the Amazon listings of these things but if you can source it from your local shop even better if you buy it through one of my links I will get half a penny in commission for being a, an Amazon associate but things like heaters, heaters are always good to have a spare heater the amount of times heaters break is criminal really, but that's another matter. But having a spare heater on standby is always a good gift. Heater controllers, an even better gift, and these are things that control your heaters, because one of the ways heaters fail, I'm saying heaters a lot, is that they stick on, the thermostat stick, and it boils the tank and kills all the fish. You don't want that, and a heater controller is the thing that can stop that. Air pumps and related things like sponge filters and pieces like that, um, really good, really useful. Anyone that's got more than one fish tank can definitely make use of that, but even if you've only got one, air pumps can add a lot to an aquarium. Um, things like water conditioners and, and that sort of thing, it's the thought, sort of thing that always runs out when you don't want it to run out, so a spare of that, while boring, is very useful. Aquascaping schools, does this person have a planted tank? Do they like setting up new tanks, tearing down old ones? A decent set of aquascaping tools, scissors, tweezers, that kind of stuff. Always useful. I've got multiple aquascaping sets around here and I'm forever losing the tweezers, so, you know, the more the merrier. 
Uh, and on that same vein, if they are constantly doing that, maybe you want to look at buying them some plants from some good online retailers, um, maybe some substrates, some decorations, rocks, hardscape, things like woods and rocks, always really useful, um, especially if they have multiple tanks or like to mess around with their tanks. A nice piece of wood, as strange as it sounds, would make a great gift for a pers prospective aquascaper. And then, of course, the old classic, the algae scrapers. Things like this, they might seem boring, and they are boring, but they are very useful. They will make a difference. So, hope you found that a little bit useful. If you are one of my friends or family and are thinking of buying me a gift, hey, I might have made this with you in mind. Um, these are the type of things that I would appreciate, and I think I'm a fairly common standard fish keeper. The number one is, although it's gift cards and it sounds boring, it really it doesn't have to be. It can. You can make a day of it. It can be an experience. Um, like I said earlier, I really loved it when my kids made me vouchers and gift cards. It wasn't to a specific shop, it was just, I'm going to spend some time with you and you're allowed to bore me to tears while you take me around a fish shop for half a day. Uh, those little experiences are always more valuable than you might think. So a little bit of effort there to just draw a picture of a fish, get your kids to draw a picture of a fish so they can take grandpa or grandma around the fish shop. That's definitely good. If you can use that to also support some local businesses, whether they're small businesses who have online shops, um, again, all these links will be in the description of some potentials that you can go and check out. I would also say, jump on my Discord server. I say that all the time, but jump on my Discord server. If you really do want to pick the perfect gift for someone, we'll have a community there who will help you find the perfect gift for your fish keeper. So all that said, I hope you find something useful in there. If nothing else, hope you have a nice Christmas and holiday season or whatever we're politically obliged to call it these days. Whatever it is, have a good one. Um, click that subscribe button. That could be your gift to me. Click subscribe. Gift a membership to one of your family. Mm, sell, sell, sell. Thank you very much. See you in the next one. Bye.